everyone this is Mark Phillip at Studica and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a very simple blend tree for movement and idling animations with a 2D character in Unity 3D. What you'll end up having by the end of this tutorial is something very simple. Let me go ahead and show you. If I play my game, I can uh, move using WASD and you'll notice my character is animating in the directions that I'm moving and walking uh, with the exception of diagonal directions. I'm only using four directions for this. And you'll see my uh, animator over here firing uh, with blend trees. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm going to assume that you already have a basic working knowledge of Unity, so I'm not going to be going over small details um, about how to use the software. I'm going to be assuming you know a lot of this stuff already. And uh, we will be using C Sharp for this. Uh, I apologize if you're a Java person. So the first thing you guys are going to want to do is basically get some character sprites into your Unity project. I grabbed uh, this free Unity asset off of the asset store called RetroAct RPG Sprite Pack 01. I'm just going to be using these for now. If you have something more complex that you've done yourself, go for it. Um, but this is what I'm going to be referencing. So I have these imported. Now the first thing I need to do is actually create my animations. So inside the uh, assets folder here, I'm going to create a new folder and just call it animations. And to actually make the animations, what I find to be the easiest thing to do is to take your sprites and grab several of them at a time from your sprite sheet and put them into your scene. So this guy right here, these are going to be my downward facing idle characters or animations. So I'm going to click on both of them and drag and drop them into the scene. I'm going to get this window coming up that's going to ask me to save my animation somewhere. So I'm going to put in my animations folder. I'm going to call it idle down. And I'm going to do the same for all the other positions. This is going to be my idle up. And then this will be my idle left. And, you know, hopefully you get the idea. Uh, it's a bit of tedious work. You know, this is doing animation stuff in Unity tends to be a little bit tedious. Uh, but what's nice is, you know, if you are an animator, not so much a programmer, you can really use their tools without having to program things. Uh, so now I'm going to create my walking animation. All right, here's my downward walking, these four sprites right here. So I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to hold shift and left click over here to grab multiple, or you can control click each one to do them individually. I'm going to bring these up here and I'm going to name this walk down. Uh, grab my walking up ones, bring them in here. It's going to be walk up. And walk left this is going to be here. No, I know this bit's a little boring, uh, but once I have this done, we'll get to the interesting parts. All right, so now we have all of my walks and all of my idols. Now it automatically creates all these controllers for me. I'm going to go ahead and delete these. I don't need those. Uh, we'll be making our own controller that uses blend trees for handling the animations. Likewise, I'm going to go ahead and go in my hierarchy here and delete all of these uh, sprites that it created for me. So what I need to do now is actually go into game object and create a 2D sprite. Uh, by default, I'm going to just give this a downward facing idle sprite just so I can see it on my screen. Now at this point, what we want to do is actually create our animation controller. Uh, this is what's going to be the bulk of this video. It's going to be the bulk of what we're looking to do here. So in my animations folder, I'm going to right click in here and choose create uh, animator controller. And whoops, I'm going to name this to uh, just, I'm going to call it movement. So now we have this created, uh, we're going to go and double click on it and it will open our animator. I'm going to uh, undock this and make it bigger so that you can actually see this on the video. Inside of here, we're just going to right click and do create state uh, from new blend tree. And you'll see that it creates our default any state and entry nodes for us. And we're going to create a second blend tree doing the same thing. And then to change these names, what we're going to do is uh, 
click on this blend tree, then over here in the inspector, we're gonna click on the blend tree name. And we're gonna rename this to idle. And then on this one, we're gonna rename this to movement. So all of our uh, animation states will be for idling will be in the idle blend tree. All of our movement animation states will be in the movement blend tree. Now our entry by default is going to be idle because when we start, if the player is not pressing any buttons, any movement keys, we want it to basically just throw us into the idle state. Uh, however, what we will have are transitions between these two. But in order for us to set these transitions up, uh, what we'll be doing is creating a boolean to dictate this uh, transition. So we'll have uh, we'll make a boolean called uh, movement. And what we'll do is right click on idle, click make transition, and we'll left click, drag that arrow, left click it to movement, and then right click on movement, take that arrow, drag it, and left click it onto idle. So these transitions, if you're familiar with the normal animation states in Unity, these are basically saying that idle can go to movement and movement can go to idle. And for each of these transitions, we can specify a setting. So in here, we can left click on these arrows. I'm going to choose the one going to movement. I'm going to uncheck it has exit time I'm going to expand out settings, turn off fixed duration and set transition duration to zero. Uh, we're just doing this because our sprites are discrete <clears throat> and we don't need any sort of transition time. We're basically looking to instantly go from one sprite to the next. So I'm disabling all this stuff so that we don't run into kind of weird looking transitions between our animation trees. Uh, and then under conditions, we're gonna click the plus icon. We're gonna click where it says blend and choose movement. And so if movement is set to true, we're gonna transition from idle to movement. Then for the movement transition back to idle, we're gonna do the same thing. Click off exit time, click off all this stuff. And then we're gonna to go to the plus uh, icon and we're gonna set this condition to movement and we're gonna set it to false. So now if our movement Boolean is set to false, um, this transition gets executed and we go back to idle. How this Boolean gets switched, we'll do that in code, which we'll be showing in a minute here. Now, before we can set up the rest of the blend tree, we do need to create some more parameters here. So we're gonna create a couple of floats. <clears throat> this one's gonna be called direct, or Direction X, I'm abbreviating it to dir X. And then we're gonna have a dir Y. And then we're also going to have two floats for last dir X. And another float for last dir Y. Our last directions will be used for dictating which idle state we're in. So say our character is moving to the left and then we stop pressing the key. When we transmission back to idle, we need to know what was the last direction our character was facing before they stopped moving. That way we can say, oh, the character was moving left, then he stopped. That means the character is still facing left. So we activate the facing left animation. Um, so now at this point, we actually get into the blend tree. So let's go look at the idle blend tree. You can double click on it to actually open the tree. And this is basically what it looks like. And right now it's a one dimensional blend tree. We're looking to use a two dimensional blend tree. So over here in the inspector where it says blend type, we click on the 1D, choose 2D simple direction. And what this will allow us to do is utilize two parameters to dictate how we're blending between animations. Um, so you see here it says parameters and each one is set to blend and blend. If we click this drop down, we'll see our parameters listed here. And so for idling, we're actually gonna choose last direction X and last direction Y for our parameters. And in our motion list, we're going to click the plus icon and choose add motion field. And we're actually gonna create four of these. So in here, uh, what we wanna do, and let me move, uh, I'm gonna dock my animator real quick so that I can uh, see all of my animations here. In each of these motions, we're gonna drag uh, each of our animations onto these boxes. So I'm gonna drag idle down, whoops. Idle down goes right here. Idle up will go right here. Idle left will go here and idle right will go at the bottom. Now for each of these positions, we can actually dictate these manually by moving these nodes around if we wanted to. Um, but ultimately, I'm going to hard code these values. So for idle down, we know that we want our down animation to play when our 
y is in the negative one direction. Uh, for idle up, we'll have a zero position on the x axis and a positive one on the y. Our idle left is going to be a negative one on the x axis and a zero on the y, and then a positive one and zero for right. Now we can see where all of our nodes ended up here in the diagram. Uh, if we then move around this red dot, this is if our player, for instance, was moving around on the map and it's showing you the circles around each node show you which state is blended the highest at the moment. So that's really all there is to setting up the blend tree. Um, but what we do want to do is go back into our animator, which I've docked over here now, go into the base layer and go back to the movement blend tree and double click on it now. In the movement blend tree, we don't have anything at the moment. So what we are going to do is what we just did on the idle blend tree. We're going to click on the blend tree here, go up to blend type, choose 2D simple directional. In the blend dropdown, we'll be using direction X and direction Y, not last direction, because we'll be updating direction X and Y as our player is pressing down a movement key. So this will be giving us active data on what direction we're moving at any given time. In our motion dropdown, we're going to add uh, four motion fields again. And I'm going to drag all of my animations into here. So I got walk down, walk up, walk left, and walk right. So for our walk down, again, we know that we'll be doing a 0x, negative 1 on the y. Walk up is going to be 0x, positive 1 on the y. Walk left will be negative 1 on the x, um, 0 on the y. Walk right will be positive 1 on the X and 0 on the Y. And so we now have this blend tree set up as well. So you can see how simple this is, right? I don't have to create transitions between each and every single one of these things because I can handle it in the uh, blend tree here. So you can see in the animator now our blend tree basically is a, it has these nodes branching out of it that show us walk down, walk up, walk left, walk right. And you can actually, if you want to really visualize how your blend tree is working, you can mess with these sliders and it will highlight the trees that are um, most active right now and that are blending together the most. Now at this point what we want to do is on our uh, sprite character, I'm going to go back into my scene view, uh, we want to add this animation controller to him. So we're going to grab, drag and drop the movement animator onto here. Now we actually have an animator involved, but if we were to play our game, nothing happens right now because we still need to script it. So on our character, we're going to do add component and we're going to type movement. Uh, it's going to be a new script and we're going to do this in C sharp. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is create some movement variables. <clears throat> and this is going to be a vector three called heading. The heading vector is going to be used for determining uh, basically what what are our X and Y values uh, of our direction at any given time while our character is moving? We're also going to have a public float called move speed, which we're just going to set to 4F for now. Uh, we make it public so that we expose it in the inspector and we can uh, mess with it. We're going to set up our animation variables. So we're going to have an animator. I'm going to call it this anim. And then we're going to have a float last X and last Y. So this should be all we need. Uh, in our start function, what we're going to do is say this anim equals get component animator. Um, so what this will do is basically when the program starts, it will grab the animator component off of our character, which is this right here. And then that will allow us to manipulate it in code. Uh, now what we're going to do is create a function called move. And inside here, we're going to have vector three right movement equals vector three dot right times move speed times time dot delta time uh, times input dot get axis uh, horizontal there. I'll explain this in a second. We're going to have a second vector three called up movement, which equals vector three dot up times move speed times time dot delta time times input dot get axis vertical. 
Um, so what these are doing is basically creating two different vectors that we're going to combine together to create uh, overall movement for us. Now our right movement is going to be set to vector three dot right, which by default is vector one zero zero. Uh, so one in the x direction, positive x direction, zero on the y and zero on the z. We're going to multiply it by our move speed, which we've defined up here, and then we're going to multiply that by time dot delta time to get. Um, like frame specific movement so that we don't jolt around and so that we look um, when we move we look normal and not choppy so to speak uh, and then we're going to multiply by the value of input dot get axis horizontal now our input for horizontal if we look at our input manager uh, the positive input is set to D uh, negative input is set to A or the left and right keys so what will happen here is say if I hit the negative input of A, uh, this function here is going to return negative one. If I hit D, it's going to return positive one. So basically by throwing this in here, we're determining whether our right movement is going to be negative on the X axis or positive on the X axis. And then we're doing the same here with the up movement. The only difference is vector three dot up is uh, 0, 1, 0 as a vector. So it's 1 on, in the positive y direction, 0 on x, 0 on z. Uh, but then it's the same thing with our get axis on vertical, which are taking either w or s as our movements. w would return a positive 1, uh, s would return a negative 1. And what we're going to do is take our heading, uh, which we defined up here, which we actually don't need to do. I'm actually going to take this out right now and uh, do this instead. Uh, so I took out vector three from the global space here and put it into the move function because we don't actually need it in the global space. Uh, so then I'm gonna do vector three heading equals vector three dot normalize um, right movement plus up movement and then a semicolon at the end there. So this is creating a vector called heading, which is going to normalize the direction that our character is going to be facing. So by combining right movement plus up movement, we're doing vector addition there. So the normalize will take the vector addition of right movement plus up movement and clamp them between one and negative one. Um, this allows you to keep your vectors within one unit of you know, basically distance uh, so that you're not ending up with like 3.6 on your vector for the X axis. Instead, it would be like 0.6 or something along those lines. Uh, then what we want to do is actually move our character. So we're going to do transform dot position plus equals right movement transform dot position plus equals up movement. And then we're going to create a function in a moment here called update animation and we're going to pass in the heading variable to this function. So we're going to do void uh, update animation and it's going to take a vector three called dir, short for direction, uh, as a parameter here. And then inside of here we're going to create an if statement that's going to say if direction.x uh, equals zero f and direction.y equals uh, zero f then uh, we're going to basically want to trigger our idle animation. So if we are idle, execute idle animation. So in here, now we're going to call on our animator by calling this anim dot set float last dir x to last x. Uh, and we haven't defined last x yet, but we will in a couple of lines here. And then we're going to do this anim.set float uh, last y to last y. And then lastly, we're going to do this anim.set uh, bool to uh, moving and set it to false. I think our Boolean was called moving. It's called movement. So let me do movement, set it to false. So let me finish writing the rest of this function and then I'll explain it uh, in more detail. So then we have an else statement. We're gonna say last x equals direction dot x, last y equals direction dot y. Uh, this anim dot set bool uh, movement to true. 
And then outside the else statement, we're gonna have this anim.set floats dir x to direction.x, this anim.set floats dir y, direction.y. So what we're doing in here is first we're checking to see is our direction, rather is our heading um, set to zero. If our heading is set to zero, then what we want to do is say, we're now idle. And so we're going to tell our animator to set the last direction x and y variables to our last x and last y variables. Now by default, these are gonna be like initialized to zero. Um, but as this code runs, we will end up changing last x, last y as execution continues. After we um, set these floats, then we tell the Boolean in our animator uh, for movement, we set it to false, which will trigger our transition. If you remember in our base layer of our animator, uh, our condition for transitioning to idle is to set movement to false. So what we're doing here is basically if we're not moving or if our direction is zero, then we know that we're idle, correct? So we're gonna set our movement Boolean to false, which will then trigger uh, this transition from movement into idle. We have an else statement here though that's saying, well, if our direction is not zero, so if we're moving anywhere at all, uh, then we're going to actually set our last x value to the current direction x and the last y value to the current direction y. The reason we do this here is because we need to constantly keep track of our last x and y for our idle positioning. Because uh, our idle positioning is going to rely on what our last x and y directions were so that our idle blend tree knows which way to be facing. Now our first if statement is already ruling out whether or not we're idle. This else will only execute if this if statement does not execute. So we know then that if this if statement is executing, or rather this else statement is executing, we know then that we are definitely moving because our x and y values are not both equal to zero. So we do this anim.set bool movement to true so that we can fire off this transition here, which is going from idle to movement. Because if we look at this transition, we have our condition is movement being set to true. Now, after we do our uh, controlling statements here, then what we're saying is uh, at the end of this function, we set our float for direction x and direction y to the direction x and direction y. Um, again, these floats here are part of our animation parameters, remember? And the reason we do this is because our blend tree needs to know what these values are. Because if you look in our movement blend tree, remember we're using direction X and direction Y to determine which uh, animation is active at any given time. Even though we're telling the movement to fire here, we still have to tell it, well, what is our direction, right? So this is gonna initiate our transition, but this is actually gonna give our blend tree the values it needs to determine what animation to play. Now, the last thing we need to do is actually put our move function into the update function. Every frame that the game is updating, we're gonna be executing, you know, all this. Uh, so at this point, we should be able to save and uh, let's make sure the script is all right. He's there. Uh, I should be able to play the game now. And we can see my guy moving. And we can actually see while I'm moving, if you look at my animator over here, we can see the blend tree. What's interesting is when I do diagonals, you'll notice, you know, due to Pythagoras theorem, we have these 0.7 uh, very values, right? So in, in a 2D, like say top down game, you might do a directional movement. So you might have a sprite where your character moves top right or up left, up or down left, down right. For this, I only have four directions, um, but this allows me to move essentially in eight directions, but I only have animations for four. Regardless, you could expand on this and create eight directions. So imagine, um, if you had eight directions, you would add four more motions here, right? And you would do stuff like, oh, position Y is 0.7, or sorry, 0.7, right? And this would be saying, oh, well, now we know for 0.7, we're moving up right uh, versus, you know, straight right. 
that's about it for the tutorial. I just wanted to show you how to do a very simple blend tree. Hopefully with this information, you can see how you could expand on this for uh, more complex 2D sprites or for say 3D animations as well. Uh, again, for 2D sprites, since we're using discrete animations, um, the blend tree's benefits of blending animations is not quite as apparent. However, what is more apparent is the simplicity of this design. Um, the fact that both my tr trees are just in these nodes that I can double click on and I don't have to manage, you know, 30 different transitions or whatever between eight different uh, animation states. So it creates very simple, easy to read state machines that are controlled very dynamically through variables. Uh, so that concludes this video. Uh, hopefully you found it informational. Feel free to check us out at www.studica.com. Uh, and also you can see more of our Unity blogs and tutorials at our uh, Studica blog. You can Google that and it should be the first result. So uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one and happy developing.